Welcome to this online training on developing a cross-border cooperation project. As we presented in our previous videos, there are seven key steps in preparing a good quality project. Let's now take a look at step five and see how to define your project intervention logic. There are four basic levels in the design of your project intervention logic. However, some intermediary levels may be requested by your program. So please always check the documentation of the call for proposals for your cross-border cooperation program. At the lowest level, you will define what you will do. These are your project activities. For example, you will train, design, publish, etc. These operations require the utilization of material and human resources. And these are called your inputs. Your activities will produce or deliver services, goods or infrastructure. And these are usually called outputs. Your project will be held accountable for delivering these outputs. So please be very careful when defining and quantifying these. Outputs are the building blocks for your project and should provide the conditions necessary to achieve the higher level results. The project's higher results level, also often called outcome or specific objective level, specifies what your project aims to achieve. It focuses on the short-term or medium-term effects of the output. It identifies what will change, notably in terms of behavior, or who will benefit as a direct consequence of the project. But remember, the project itself is expected to achieve the defined results. At the top, you will identify the broader, longer-term effects to which your project, along with others, will contribute. This is the impact or overall objective level. It should indicate relevance to the program by being directly linked to a program priority. As you can see, there should be logical links between your project's activities, outputs, results and impacts. To do just for the sake of doing makes no sense. Your activities will have to produce or deliver something. But to produce infrastructure or deliver services or goods that are of no use to anybody is also absurd. Your outputs should lead to a positive change for someone, preferably even for many people. These are your project's target groups. Eventually, the results of your project should contribute to a broader positive change to which the cross-border cooperation program aspires when funding your project. It should improve the lives of your project's final beneficiaries. Other important aspects to integrate into your project intervention are management and communication. Make sure you include relevant communication activities, both internal to ensure smooth coordination and dialogue among project partners, and external to make your project's results and outputs visible and possibly even replicable by others. Also think about sustainability of your project's outputs and results. This should be built in from the beginning of project design. As project partners tend to jump too quickly into thinking of doing something instead of thinking of achieving something and then sometimes lose track of their broader strategy, we strongly encourage you to build your project intervention logic starting from the objectives. In preparing your project intervention logic, please pay attention to the format and terminology used in the call documents of your cross-border cooperation program, as well as to any possible specific requirements, such as limitations on the number of objectives to be defined. If your program requires a logical framework matrix, also called log frame, your project intervention logic will fit in the first column of this matrix. Remember that the log frame matrix is a tool to provide a concise and logical summary of the key components of your project. In the previous videos, our project partners Anna, Boris and Carla have carried out the analytical work necessary to identify the project strategy. Let's now see how they design 
their project's intervention logic on this basis. Okay, let's start from the highest possible objective we should be able to achieve with our project. I guess that would be the reduced amount of excess use of fertilizer. It is a key issue. Well, the objective of larger proportion of nutrients in runoff intercepted seems to me to be at the same level. Yes, I guess you are right. Which one to put there then? Both lead to the issue of reduced level of nutrients reaching water bodies. OK, so let's put this one then as our result. Yes, that's a good idea. Just a second, dear partners. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It is of key importance that we are sure that the result to be achieved is mostly under the project's control. That is to say, the project can be held primarily responsible for achieving it. Is this the case for reduced levels of nutrients reaching water bodies? Good point. I suppose not, since there are two important items in our objective tree outside our scope, but still contributing to the reduced level of nutrients reaching water bodies. I'm talking about the stricter enforcement of the laws and regulations and the sewage and wastewater systems being upgraded. Well, yes indeed. We will address only the land-derived nutrients issue, not the discharges from sewage and wastewater. So the main result that will be under our control could be formulated as reduced amount of land-derived nutrients reaching the Rivala Alavia water bodies in runoff. We can achieve this even if there is no stricter enforcement of the laws and regulations, as we will create an economic incentive for the farmers. And we will also raise the interest of the property owners in restoring vegetation on the shores. OK, but still, what do we do then with the reduced amount of excess use of fertiliser and larger proportion of nutrients in runoff intercepted? Surely they are also results. Can we have several results? If it is logically based on your objective analysis, if it does not appear overambitious based on your competences and your expected project resources, and if there are no specific limitations in this regard in your cross-border cooperation program, so be it. Well, in our program application form, it seems best to mention first one main result and then to list intermediary results. OK, so what do we do with the other items at the lower level in the objective tree? Do we put them all in the output row? So that would be the higher awareness, the farmer's ability to estimate the needed amount of fertiliser, the restored shore vegetation, and the sufficient capacity to monitor oxygen and nutrient levels. It may sound logical, but in practice, in your project, it is usually not so straightforward. The main thing to remember is that results are effects with a clear benefit to your target groups or effects in terms of changes in behavior of your target groups. Outputs are services or goods or infrastructure produced or delivered by your activities. Look again at what you wanted to put in the output row. Well, the farmer's ability, the higher awareness, and the capacity to measure don't seem to be direct products of our activities, but rather things that have a benefit in themselves. So they are also results. But some of these results have again an intermediary character. Maybe we do not need to list them all in the summary table, but only focus on the key ones that we will measure. I agree. And we can describe further in the application form. And so as outputs, we have the restored shore vegetation. But surely we will have more key outputs. For sure. Let's look at what we need to achieve our results. For instance, we will need equipment delivered, farmers trained. And so our partners list all the outputs and subsequently brainstorm the necessary activities. They number the activities, outputs and results in such a way that the reader will understand which ones belong together. For each of the activities, they then brainstorm the inputs needed in terms of staff, supplies, travels, organizational facilities, etc. They then combine the costs into different categories. 
So now we've covered the whole intervention logic as well as the inputs. Well done. Well, not completely. We'll still have the items in our objective tree that are out of our scope. Ah, uh, yes. Some of them will remain as external factors that may affect our project. Should we see how to integrate assumptions about them? And our project will have an impact on some of them. Indeed. So let's put the key items that our project's objectives lead to in the impact row. And the rest, mostly those next to the objectives within our scope, as external factors on which to base assumptions. We'll turn to the assumptions in the next video. But still, there is a couple of things you need to check for the intervention logic like the formulation of the outputs, results and impacts. Do these follow the SMART quality criteria? That is, are they specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound? Well, let's take the reduced amount of excess use of fertiliser. Is it specific enough? I guess we could add by farmers and in the Rivala Alavia regions. Should we specify what kind of fertiliser? The main thing is that assessors, for example, will not be confused as to what exactly you are talking about. So who and where is useful, but the type of fertiliser may not matter that much. And then measurability. I think this is OK. It can be measured how much is used quite easily. But I guess we will think about this more precisely when we discuss indicators. I think the A for achievable is also OK. A reduction is possible if farmers have the motivation to do so. And relevance is strong, as without this, it would be quite hard to achieve some significant reduction of nutrients in water bodies. I mean, only on the basis of interception. And time bound it is as well, as all of these results will have to be achieved by the end of the project. I guess that is easy. And so our partners check all impacts, results and outputs, making some small corrections, specifying here and there what exactly they mean, and making sure they have the same idea on what the project should achieve. What about sustainability? Are you sure that your project outputs and results will be maintained after the project ends? The biggest issue here is probably the nitrogen testing equipment. How can we make sure these instruments will be replaced or repaired if they stop working? Can't we create some kind of rotation scheme for the nitrogen testing equipment? Good idea. We could purchase a few dozen testing kits through the project, which could become the property of the farmers' associations, for instance, with each farmer paying a small annual amount to use them. This would constitute a fund, which could be used to pay for replacement or repairs. If we make sure the economic benefits to the farmers are big enough, it should work. I'm not sure handing over the equipment is possible under the rules of this cross-border cooperation program. Otherwise, we could maybe keep the ownership of the equipment and give it for long-term lease to the farmers' association, then replace it with the money from the lease. We'll need to clarify what is possible with the program. Indeed, you will need to check with your program managing authority or Joint Technical Secretariat when you have such doubt. But for sure, whenever you are, for instance, purchasing equipment or setting up a database or creating a service or a centre, you will have to think very carefully how these will be sustained in the long run. Our partners have a similar discussion for their other outputs and results. Now, there is another issue that we need to talk about, and this is how will others know about your project and its results and outputs? Let's make a good joint website in our two languages to inform the public about our water bodies, what eutrophication does to them, and what solutions have been tested in our project. And perhaps several regional radio shows with stories related to clean water and what can be done. And we could have an annual water event. We could call it Happy Water or something like that. We could invite representatives of the farmers, local and regional authorities, environmental NGOs, some donors, and discuss what can be done to reduce the level of nutrients reaching the water bodies, presenting them with our joint measurements and experience. 
Okay, so let's then now look at the full project intervention logic. Is the vertical logic complete and accurate? Are all activities clearly connected to an output? Are all outputs connected to a result? Is there an output not supported by activities? Is there a result not supported by at least one output? Are the main outputs necessary and sufficient to achieve the results and or objectives of the project? Are target groups identified? Now our partners have developed a full project intervention logic. However, they still need to review the importance of the external factors for the success of their project and think how to integrate the corresponding assumptions. If you want to have more details on the project intervention logic or log frame, please have a look here. Let's now move on to the next step of project development and watch the video on assumptions. Mm -hmm.